All right. I just got notice. I just got a warning here that I lost connection, and I think uh, I think we did here. So I'm back on. Let me know if anyone joins in. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Ginger. Yeah, I got noticed that, uh, I don't know, there was like a lost connection or something like that. Hello, Crystal. I was saying, are we still on or, you know, is it, you know I didn't even know. This is the first time that ha that's ever happened. Okay, so anyways, I'm adding this lighting down there like so okay okay now I'm gonna lose a lot of this um, contrast in here when I spray seal this that white's going to kind of it's gonna move towards transparency so I'm going a little bit thicker than probably is ideal or that looks good here um, hello welcome back everyone it's been a long time, long time no see, <laughs> or no read. Yeah, we lost, I, I don't know, we lost the connection for some reason. Luckily, I got a warning and I wasn't just uh, sitting here, you know, sitting around here uh, babbling on. Um, but anyways, yeah, I don't know what it, did, did. Did it say anything on your end or something like that? Like stream is ended or something like that? I'm not I'm not in uh, like YouTube. I'm on, I'm in the separate ser uh, software that uh, streams via YouTube here. So. So I'm not quite sure what happened, but anyway, no matter. Welcome back, everyone, to uh, Stampscape's Friday Night Live. <laughs> okay, now as I'm holding this right here, it's occurring to me, I'm probably wiping off all that uh, black ink on the, the perimeter there. All right, so that is roughly what I'm going after right here. <clears throat> it looks like it's real smudgy looking like that. Uh, let's see what it looks like in context though. All right. <clears throat> so let's see if we can, yeah. Okay, so see, I think the waves are a little bit more Oh, uh, they're more defined, I guess. Um, you know, standing out from that that background in there, and I think they look a little bit more three dimensional with that little extra tone on the top of it, like so. All right, now see this area right around in here. I want to really darken in that area right in here. Okay, so I'm not going to use the Q-tip for that, but let's go with the full um, cotton ball. And we'll go with the Brilliant Sink for that again. And let's see if we can get this fairly dark right in here. Let's see. Hello, everyone, again. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was just the server or something like that or YouTube or whatever. I don't think I didn't lose my internet connection. I don't think. Well, anyway, thanks so much for joining back in. 
Okay, so this is building up a nice little kind of perimeter area in here. I'm going to have to try to remember not to touch that, but I don't know if I will. I, end up, I always end up getting real smudgy on there. Okay, I'm really pleased with the uh, that little q-tip smearing in there though that worked out pretty good and it and it sticks reasonably well i mean not in terms of permanence but just in terms of my handling it's not like you know wiping off you know so easily Okay, so as far as sealants go, just, uh, you know, kind of your Krylon or whatever you use for a spray sealant. Um, I would use a gloss. The matte, if you have it, you know, go ahead and use it. Um, but it comes to get, it tends to get matte anyways, a little bit matte. So the glossier, the, the, you know, the, you know, this, you know, the sealant that you start off with, I think it, you know, It'll stay a little bit glossier that way. All right, so uh, let's see here. So this area has been toned out. That's not matching up real well right here. So I'll go a little bit darker right here. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so I used the Brilliance ink on my foil and let's go with the Brilliance ink right down here on the cardstock and I'll use that same media or is this one? Here we go. Okay, so the brilliance is getting a little bit darker right down in, um, on this one. Okay, so I think it'll kind of harmonize a little bit more with the um, with that transition up into the foil portion. So again, you're just, we're just kind of using value to um, you know in darkness to try to merge all of these different types of surfaces together. Okay, let's test it out here. <clears throat> okay. I wonder if I've gone too dark over here in this area. I think I've gone a little bit too dark over here. All right, but the beauty of this is that, see this clean cotton ball right here? I'm gonna go from the inside out like that and just wipe off some of that ink. So see it coming off on that cotton ball like that? So what's, you know, kind of a, a weakness in terms of media at, you know, kind of a, you know, the adhesive ability of a surface, you know, to take media and grab onto it. Um, that weakness is, you know, kind of a strength if you need to kind of manipulate something and you need to remove it here, so. Okay, so what I, this was all toned in right here like that. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting out some, uh, I don't know about cutting out, I'm wiping out some tone so that it's, it's doing that thing where I'm oscillating a little bit more. So it's going from light, let me see if I can show you here. <laughs> Gotta get that glare, okay, yeah, here. So it's darker, lighter, uh, here, here. Wipe some more of that off. I can see it now too. I guess I just kind of wiping that off. So see that that oscillation right there. Okay, so let's see what it looks like in context. All right, so yeah, that looks a little bit better. Actually, that's I took off too much. <laughs> we can do, you can keep doing this on you know forever. So here, let me see tone back in that lightly like that but it won't be the, like the exact same okay that all right all right so we need we need 
something in here. We need um, some uh, we need some lighter areas in here. Okay, so I'm going to do I use that splatter painting technique a lot of times for um, stars and snowfall, but it's really fantastic for at the base of uh, like crashing waves or something like that to get that um, kind of um, contrast and little sparkly touches in those areas. So I'm going to do that like right here and over here, okay? And then I'll add some of it down in this area as well, okay? Just so you get a common texture between these two, you know, very different uh, types of surfaces to get, hopefully get them to harmonize together a little bit more than they are. Okay, so if anyone asks a, a question um, in that last <laughs> chat thing that I didn't answer, that you can repost it. I think I think there was a couple of questions I just need, you know, I, I didn't get uh, around to. Froze and a loading circle. Okay, got it. <laughs> Just suddenly we were in a video and then suddenly silence. It was though it was as though a million voices cried out and then there was suddenly nothing. Does anyone know what that's from? <laughs> that's what that reminded me of. Okay, so right down here. I don't think I want to go crazy with this one. I'm not sure if it would look good, you know. All right, so that's what that looks like right there, like that, okay. I'll refine it too with a little bit of white paint pen work, okay. So I, I keep putting this back up because I have to see it kind of in context, you know, to get kind of the gist of what that would look like in this other area, like uh, down below. So see that right down there? So you get the splashing ways. So there's a lot more contrast. Actually, let me do this right here. Oops, it splashed really high. Okay, I better not do that. It's it's like going way up top there like that. Let me do this separately like this. So I, I just want kind of some areas, little, I don't know, textural light in here. Okay, let's just go like that. I think that should do it. Okay. Like that. It's a little bit more three-dimensional, I think, um, in terms of the appearance down here. Um, everything is, you know, getting a little bit muddled with my kind of shading and things like that. But these little you know, little splatter painted dots or something that's nice and crisp back, you know, in those areas, which uh, kind of helps the piece out, I think. All right, so that is that. Um, let's go on with the white paint pen. So it's good to have this, if this white paint pen is flowing nicely, I'll be able to add this in here. If it's not, um, this can get a little bit clogged up with that loose white pigment ink over the top of the uh, surface like that. So I'll be a little bit careful about this one. So I'm putting some little highlights and lighting. Again, it's kind of on the little crest of the wave where I've um, illuminated it a little bit with... Uh, a Q-tip white pigment ink, okay. So of course you can target your um, 
highlights with the, the pen, you know, a lot easier than, you know, just a general splatter painted, you know, kind of application. So you see these little areas like right in here, these little, you know, whatever horizontal kind of uh, waves in here, this oscillation of uh, kind of light and dark to define these waves. In these lighter areas right here, that's where I'm kind of adding these little dots like right in there, okay? And I'm adding more in the more illuminated areas, okay? So on some of these areas, it might just be... Now, this pen will stick to this no problem, okay? But if you ever put too many down there, it's not a problem just to scratch, you know, just... You might be able to scratch them off, or you might be able to just even take, like, a paper towel and just wipe it right off. You know, because this is, you know, fairly smooth. But, you know, something like a little scratcher tool or something like that, like a exacto. You know, just just lightly rubbing it off though. You don't need to like cut it out or anything like that. Okay, so that is that. So that's my silver <laughs> seaside cove, like that. Okay, let's see if it, I guess at an angle you can really see those highlights. I guess you can't see it too much like this. I, a little bit, you know, you can see that kind of that lighting on the surface like that slightly more. It depends what angle this is at and how much light is reflecting in there. Like that you can barely see it and like or, th or that you can see it, but this you can barely see it on there. But that, I don't know, I think that looks okay, like that. It changes kind of all that kind of darkness around there. It, I, I do think it changes kind of the spirit of uh, the piece in terms of, you know, what it represents in terms of the time of day. It's a little bit more, I don't know, it, it, I don't know, whatever, muted or something like that, or I don't know. All right, so let's go in now. I mean, I could have done this at any time, but I'll go in and I'll add in some extra kind of light and shade into the forms in here. And we can do that with colored pencils because we've colored in here with our, um, with our white brilliance pigment ink, no problem. I wonder if some of this silver pen will work. Um, or a pencil will work down in here to make it shimmer a little bit. I don't think I've ever, I don't know if I've used a silver pencil on anything, uh, stamping wise. Star Wars Ginger got that. I knew someone would know, or I had, I had hoped someone would know, even though my, my, my quote was like off, you know. Okay, so the forms on here, I'm going to, the lighthouse looks okay, but see where these shadows like that um, just transition right into the light. You know, we can make those a little bit more graceful by adding in kind of like tone in here, okay? Now I'm going to go with um, some blues, uh, a little bit of violet and uh, black here, uh, just because those are the colors that are kind of up here anyway, so it's like those colors right there I'm going to use as my shadows in here. So I tend to use, you know, if something represents white, um, a building or something like that, um, I tend to put what colors are in the sky uh, if it's a sunset tones, then you, you know, this would be bathed in probably warm light and I would use, you know, warm toned um, colors. But on this one, it's kind of, I mean, there's warm tones up here too, but I think I'm going to go with the blue tones. I think that's kind of more of the natural tone of this holographic too. Like if you take the lighting off of this, that's the color right there. It's kind of this 
violet, you know, kind of bluish tone. It's hard to, hard to even show it when I put my finger there. Suddenly it's getting all those you know, different colors up there. But so I'm kind of working in that um, color scheme. And I'm not going to color this hole in because, you know, this whole area. And I'm just, you know, doing the kind of the shaded areas of this. And you can come in with your rocks here like this. And just leave some of the rocks lighter too. You know, this you can get into much more kind of targeted, you know, light and shade, you know, with a, you know, a colored pencil than I can with a, you know, a, you know, a wad of, you know, wadded up a paper towel or cotton ball, or even like a Q-tip, you know. All right, so there's some of that blue. Here's a darker blue. Kind of going under the eaves a little bit for a little bit of extra shade like that i don't know if you can even see that i don't know can you see that little transition right there i'll go a little bit more okay so if you've just joined in there is some white brilliance ink underneath this um, impression right here of the lighthouse, that's why I'm able to color these, you know, add these colors on there. This, you know, going directly on top of the printable vinyl, you can get a little bit of transfer of uh, color, but not a whole lot. Okay, right here, I'm going with this really sharp pencil and it just scratched off um, my colored pencil application it's because there's hardly any, you can see it right here, there's hardly any of that white uh, pigment ink underneath this portion right here, so it just scratched it off. And this is probably a, a harder um, um, color than this one is, okay? Harder in terms of actual, you know, consistency. And this is sharp too, so it's, yeah, I'm scratching off some of this blue. So, yeah, go on with a, find a nice... Um, soft leaded uh, pencil, I don't know, whatever, wax. Like this, and if we want to get a little bit of color into your clouds too. Actually, there's, I really like this color right here, this aquamarine here. Horsey girl, you're not playing, you're not playing uh, Star Wars right now, are you? Not the, what is it, what do they call it, a new hope? Okay, so adding just a tight, you know, tinge of a little bit of blue. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this at all. It's just a subtle little touch, and I'm adding it kind of in the darker areas right here. I mean, you get color showing through anyway, so, you know, maybe I don't need this. I don't know, maybe it interferes with the color, I don't know. But I just like it as a little tinge of, you know, a little bit of extra kind of Oh, kind of hue uh, within this space. And I'm just doing it real lightly like this, okay? Not like this. I guess it gives it, you know, some inherent hue or temperature. It's kind of a jewel tone blue. So if you don't have like, you know, some color, you know, some lighting that's really reflecting off of it, then it'll have some color inherently in there. I don't know if you can see it like that. But anyway, okay, so let's see here. I like that. Okay. 
little fine tuning types of things here. I got, grabbed my little pine trees. I'm going to put some pine trees on this one out in the distance like that. I'm not going to put them like that. I'm going to just have little ones kind of poking up from uh, the surface like that down there. I should watch. I should watch that uh, Star Wars again. I haven't watched. I haven't just watched Star Wars in a while. Okay. Well, maybe we read your mind or something like that. <laughs> In terms of you, you you tra you you transmitted uh, you know some of the Star Wars vibe through the uh, through the internet here. Okay, so those are just some little uh, trees poking up there. There's they're supposed to be like on the top of the uh, island, and those will I don't know if you could see them stamped down low like that, but they'll just blend in with the. Uh, that black there when they dry. Okay, let's see. Huh. I want to get this taped down here, but I really need to spray seal this first before I do that. Okay, so let's let's get some of this. Let me just go ahead and try some of this silver down here, okay? I don't think, yeah, I can see it. It almost looks like graphite or something like that, like silver graphite. It's just slightly shiny in here at the right angle. See if we can see that at all. Yeah, okay, see that right there? That silver, see that? That's that almost works like a kind of a wink of Stella pen in some ways. Just uh, yeah, a little bit of silver colored pencil. I feel I have a lot of control over this though, too. I don't have to remember that. All right. Oh, okay. I just remembered something too that I can do here. Um, so we stamped all these um, rocks in black, right? So I'm going to take the smallest one, the tiny rock small, and I, I don't know if it'll show up in here, but I'm going to try stamping it in white um, texturing over the top of this. And hopefully some of it shows. I got clean this off a little bit. I always don't bother cleaning it. Then I'm getting these black impressions in my white pad. Caroline, uh... I toned in most of this piece right here and added in the extra kind of highlighting on it. And then we splatter painted. So it looks like that. It looks kind of crazy without the, uh, out of context, without that top scene on there. But it is kind of a crazy piece, that silver, you know, using silver cardstock like that. Um, for, for kind of a, you know, in conjunction with other things. I've stamped on like silver card stocks and gold card stocks before, um, just as a surface, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think this is gonna show up at all here. Let's see if it, no, okay, it shows up in the lighter, uh, darker areas. I won't add too much of it. So on this one, so when you're working with darks, you're going from dark inside out, I mean, out, outside to in, like that, okay? But when we're working with light, you're working from the 
inside out so it's a lighter impression in the lighter areas and then when you get out here it's a darker impression or you know it's a darker impression because there's less white ink on there so you get more of that tone showing through so it looks like that right there i don't know if you can see that in there it just it, it's it's not something like terribly bold or anything like that but all right now, I'm doing a lot of these things on here. Some of them are, aren't necessary, but I'm just kind of checking to see if it looks okay or not. And if it does, I'll I'll add more. It's not like a like a you know a, a, a practiced process right here or something like that. I'm just kind of throwing you know some things. I'm just kind of throwing at the wall and you know seeing if it'll you know look okay. Okay, so this is uh, some of the three millimeter white paint pen. I won't go too crazy with that, but we'll put in some little kind of shimmery, kind of uh, reflective light in here. So I'm going more in the center, and as it, because I as I move away from that center, I'm putting more space in between, you know, those dots for the most part. So that it still stays within that light to dark, you know, kind of lighting convention here. All right. So I, I felt I needed to go a little bit bolder down here, you know, with some of that silver because, you know, because I'm trying to make it merge with this one a little bit, you know, in terms of, I don't know, whatever, some texturing, I guess, like that. Okay. Now there, there's that color up there again. So let's go with... Um, and maybe I should have done this before, but let's go with a little bit of a, like some brown tones. I don't know, for, you know, a sandy kind of color scheme or texturing. So a little, add a little bit of warmth to it. I don't know, it, it's, it's already cool tone, but let's add some warmth to it here with this. Don't bother with the last three. <laughs> I was I was telling some people, I, you know, I don't know if I've really enjoyed too many of the Star Wars movies after, um, you know, the first three. Like a lot, you know, where I've watched them over and over. Like, you know, I think I have the box set of the first three movies. And of course, I was crazy about Star Wars as a kid. As as was everyone. Okay, so just going over some of this. It's a little bit rough and textured because I've splatter painted it. So I'm, you know, going over that splatter painted... Uh, texturing in here. I'm going over the acrylic paint. So I, I mean, ideally, you know, maybe I would have done this earlier, but, uh, you know, better late than never, maybe. And let me do some of this blue in here too. So it's a little bit warmer right around in the edges like that. And I'm going to add in some of this blue in here. This blue really works well in a lot of different uh, situations, even if it's a, you know, kind of a temperature change. All right, so there's a little tinge of it right there, that bluish tone. And let's see. Yeah, I see that little bit of color down here. It kind of carries on from up there, so you get a little bit of it in the sand like that. All right, and um, let me add a little bit of foreground down here. I, I kind of be careful not to go underneath the wave because it's supposed to represent something that's in front of it. And let me do that in the stays on. Again, the stays on's a little bit shinier. Uh, so 
So from a textural standpoint, sometimes it looks a little bit closer to us if it's contrasting against something that's kind of more flat. So again, just like the cloud stamp, I'm kind of overlapping and changing my angle a little bit with each impression. So that's what that looks like down there. Okay. Yeah, I think the grass helped a little bit. And this is really bowed right here. I need to get that flattened out. Maybe something in the sky, huh? It's kind of interesting. It's, it's got that weird kind of texturing in here. Oh, I know what it is. I didn't know what it was. Okay, I, I was thinking it was on the uh, the holographic, but it's reflecting. This is so reflective that so we can see that those ocean waves, you know, the that are down here, that's reflecting up in that area like that. So that's why it has that kind of patterning to it. It's kind of interesting though. So instead of just like a holographic like this, okay, with that type of look, see I'm getting that. Yeah, you can yeah, you can clearly see the seaside cove like right out right in there like that. Okay, so it's with with all that light, it looks like this. Oh, okay. I guess I should have known that. After all, it is, you know, kind of a reflection card, right? All right, so let me get this loosely um, adhered in there. I should really spray seal this, too, to get it kind of um, a little bit shinier. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll spray seal it all together. Now I made this um, card base a little bit larger so that um, when I get everything all put together, I can trim off the edges. You can see that kind of edge a little bit. It's not it's not too far off, but um, I like to uh, after I get everything put together. Sometimes it's like hanging off a little bit, like off the edge or something. Like that. I like to trim the edges. You know, once it's all kind of um, put together so that's nice and, um, I don't know, kind of, you know, it's a tighter kind of clean application. Sometimes I close it like that and I just trim this off so that everything's nice and flush. Okay, now this is vinyl sticker paper and I could peel this off and stick it down like this, but sometimes when I do that, this stuff is so sticky that if I just touch it like this, it's like, oh my god, you know, then I'm trying to peel this off and it, it kind of really warps and kind of creases, you know, some of that um, foil aspect of it, which I don't want, so I just use this. I just find this, you know, to be um, easier, and I can uh, get it exactly where I want it. So you just take it and fold it like this. And just take this right in here, butt it up against that, get it in there nice and flush, and lay it down like so. All right, now this one, like I said, I should spray this first, you know, because when I do this and I put this tape on it, sometimes it transfers that ink that's on here onto this, but I want to I wanna see what this looks like, though. I'll try to do this very lightly like this. I'll do it across maybe the center. 
Here, I'll do this right here. Put in a little bit more on here because it's kind of bowing right here. You know, that foil. Yeah, okay, that, I think that worked out okay. I'm looking right here to see if, like, there's this imprint. I guess there is. You can see that imprint right here. So I took a lot of ink off the corners like that, but I can always add it back in there after it's, you know, placed in here, so... I'll use this right here. All right. So there is the scene. Let's see here. I might want the lighter gulls. Where is, let me see if I have that around here. I usually keep my little birds, one of the little birds around. I don't know, these, I haven't used this one in a while. Let's see. Okay, I don't want that huge amount of uh, birds in here, so I'm going to wipe some of them off. Or dry, know, take some of the ink off of them. I don't want it to be a... too big of a... Uh, like a flock of them right in here. Yeah, there we go. That's about right. All right. So, okay, so this is what this looks like. I need to be careful here. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to close this fully because that ink, you know, could transfer up here, you know, before spray sealing it. So, but this is just the general type of, you know, kind of look of it. You know, these kind of reflection cards like this with that thing. Look at that. Look at that down there in those waves. Like that. It's like it gives movement to it. That's kind of cool. Whatever that's reflecting my uh, studio light, I guess, or something like that. But yeah, look at these kind of these striations going across that sky like that. that looks kind of cool. And that's where it's just kind of reflecting off of. It looks like it's reflecting off right there, huh? But it has that different patterning, you know, with this seaside cove stamped out down there, reflecting that light back up in there. But I think that kind of harmonized reasonably well um, in this piece. We have three completely different types of papers. I mean, it looks, you know, that doesn't look right like that at all, but you know, you're looking at it like this, you know, for the most part, you know, when someone's looking at the card, so you get that lighting kind of in here. Like that, I can use a little bit more shading maybe in here. I can kind of, you know, fine tune it a little bit more with, you know, a little bit more shade across in here, you know, but um, I think in general, you know, I think that worked out okay. Um, oh. So I almost forgot about this too. And I should have done that before, but I didn't go back over the top of some of this with some additional white pigment ink to just soften up some of these um, forms in here. Uh, like I was saying, you know, kind of sandwiching the forms so that I could have used some, yeah, let me see if I can do it here. Okay, so let's take this. What I'm talking about right here is uh, 
let's add a little bit more of like a foggy texturing in here uh, with some additional pigment ink in here. White pigment ink. Okay. Oh, I need to be careful about this. I forgot I re-inked this white, knowing how much white I was going to use on this perimeter right here, so. Okay, so let's go like this, and let's add a little bit of the kind of a hazy fog or something at the base of this um, island right here. And then I'll add it around um, on some of my rocks right here. And then, um, let's say, let's come up into some of these clouds right up in here. And I'll just add some of it right over the top. So um, on some of these, I mean, I, I think it looks okay as is because I stamped it out lighter in those areas, but I think this will just make those clouds look a little bit more uh, kind of soft on the uh, illuminated side of them. So I don't know if you could see that there. Here, I'll contrast it. See those clouds up there, you know, I think they look different than like these ones, right? Like that, so that's what I'm doing. I'm adding just a little bit of an extra layer of translucent white into those areas. Let's come, let's come over the top of this island as well in a couple areas. All right, let me see this again here. That one right there. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit airier. I guess, I don't know. I wanted it kind of bolder in theory, but I think, I don't know, I think this is looking, <laughs> it looks a little bit better airier maybe, and less kind of, uh, I don't know, whatever, ominous. Maybe it still does, you know, I don't know, like storms coming in or something like that, but uh, I don't know, we can have kind of both in here. We can have like real kind of illuminated and billowy and, you know, dramatic in the, in the shadows or something like that. But there we go. So, oh, that looks really cool like that, huh? Like at that angle with that light. Looks like a mushroom cloud. <laughs> but I like those colors. Let me see, where do they go? I lost it. There it is like that. So you get like that. It's like noon right here, okay? And it's, I don't know if we get a sunset, but it's, um, it's like twilight or something like that, or I don't know, something like that in here. And then actually that kind of color looks kind of interesting too. It looks like the light is coming from the horizon like that. And it's uh, kind of nighttime up here. You can kind of almost like splatter paint some uh, white up there. I don't think you'd be able to see it like that, but then you go like that, and then, you know, those little stars would come out. Hmm. I don't know if I should do that or not. That might be, like, too much texture in here, because it's already really textural. Let me just add a, you know, I'll add a couple little, just hand-done stars up here.
uh, just something like that. I don't know, from a textual standpoint. See, so you, so you can't really see the stars up there, but then you go like that. You can see, you know, some of them are standing out a little bit like that. And you go like that, and... I mean, no one's going to be, like, viewing that like that, I don't think, but... I don't know, it's just like a little bit of an extra touch, you know, like subtle touch up there. I mean, you, you know, you can make it bolder if you want to. But look at this, like, viewing it like this. It's almost, like, really monochromatic down here. Like this. You see more color like that. I don't know. It, it kind of makes for a little bit of a dynamic uh, service. Oh, I like that right there. Isn't that awesome? It looks like a... That does look like a, you know, like a sky up there in some ways. You know, with it, uh, kind of just that tone up top there, like that cloudy tone. Uh, that actually that looks more like a sunset to me. All right, so there is your uh, Friday night live card. Um, printable, holographic, vinyl sticker paper, <laughs> silver cardstock, and just your semi-gloss white plain cardstock like that down there. Whether, I, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, maybe this area down here would be just, you know, more dynamic if it was just all silver or something like that. And I just put that texturing over the top of it. That would certainly make it a faster process. And you can just do all of your touches in here with um, just impressions, you know. I'll have to try that sometime. I'll, I'll do this card maybe in a, I don't know if it'll be too much of a quick card, but, you know, do it like in a quarter page um, format or something like that. Actually, this, even just like this would be kind of interesting, I think. Like a half page like this. Like, oh, it's not like, it'd be almost like a square um, format for a card. But I think we can get something like this done um, reasonably fast. Just, you know, cutting out some of those um, extra little um, processes in there. But I, again, I just, I don't know, I did that like this because I wanted to see what would it, if something would work okay or not, and if we can get it to harmonize reasonably well, you know, where it just didn't look like completely unrelated, um, you know, types of, you know, kind of contrasting surfaces that didn't look like a, you know, part of a, you know, one scene or something like that. But um, I don't know, I just, just work, I don't know, just work a lot of black ink, you know, I think that's the thing that did it in here. So you see these little transitions right here with the black right here. So transitioning from right here to up here, we got that black tone around there in terms of like a little vignette. There's a little bit of vignette of black around that silver like that. And then we have that black vignetting around the white, you know, cardstock. Of course, we made the cardstock darker, you know, to match, you know, the darkness of these areas too. But for the most part, it's like three vignettes. And that's the thing that's Kind of unifying them it's just they're all and then they're all tied in with this whole kind of blacker you know perimeter like that so i don't know I, I think there's like some different possibilities that you can do that with you know there's different you know colors of foil um and such you can just do a nighttime sky and just do everything in black ink and don't worry about adding in you know extra shading and coloring and that type of thing. And I think you can come up with like a different version of this that's done really quickly. Or you can get just a sunset. This could have been done, you know, this whole area up here. Um, actually, I, I don't know how you do this lighthouse because if you stamp this on top of like a photo stamping, I guess you can, on top of that photo paper, you can still do that white blocking out and then get that, you know, um, lighthouse like that in there. Um, but you could do, you know, if there's kind of a, just a general color of some, you know, sunset tone up there, um, you can potentially just stamp that lighthouse on top of it and where that lighthouse is the color of the background. Just don't have too many textures running through there because you'd have it running right through the lighthouse like that. But if it was just like one solid color where there were other colors, like maybe up here, then I think that would be a really quick version of this um, seen even with the reflected area down here but just like i said just you know just do it in all silver down there or something like that and just do you know just impressions you don't have to add in all that extra tone and i think it would work pretty good 
So, yeah. So, Horsey Girl, I take it you're a, you're a Star Wars fan, huh? <laughs> oh, and on, so uh, other things out here, you know, I don't know what I would do out here. I would probably do something, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something within the theme of this piece that would be kind of cool. Um, you know, it'd be kind of cool is to do some sort of um, graphic little element, like you would cut out like a piece of this you know, foil or something like that and just do like the seagulls in here or something like that and kind of you put it down here and, you know, to, you know, to whoever you're giving it to, if you're giving it away to someone and, you know, whatever love, you know, in your name here with that little thing and then, you know, they would open up their card like that, you know, I think that would be kind of a cool kind of a sequential, um, type of little graphic on the outside, kind of, you know, where you give someone a little bit of a hint of what's going to be on the interior. Or you can even do like a little cube of this right here. And then you just use a little portion of this like side cove in there or something like that. It could be, you know, with a little bit of a, you know, gulls above it, you know, and a tiny little, um, you know, uh, whatever it's like it's almost it's like a i don't know what do you call it not a dingbat or icon um i don't know i can't think of it now but the, the little, you know some little type of graphic like that you know to give them some sort of a hint of the interior or something of that sort i think that'd be kind of cool so, so sometimes you just go with like the, you know some of the smallest little element within the piece and uh you know, that will lead into, you know, the, the main scene. All right. So anyway, thanks again for uh, bearing with me on that, uh, you know, whatever, the two-part, <laughs> the two-part live here. Sorry about whatever happened in there. I don't know what happened uh, with that connection. But um, yeah, this is a really fun card for me. Um, in terms of the end result, especially, like I really like this splashing little area down in here all over that silver. So it looks like that to me, it looks like that little, those little splashes, it looks like they're hovering over because they're on the, uh, the white cardstock and on the silver, but it looks like they're kind of suspended and three dimensional like that. So it makes it really fun. And of course, I've always liked the, the holographic, um, changes of colors, um, that happen with the, uh, the angle of the card and, you know, with whatever lighting's in there. So I'd give it a try. Um, drop me a note if you ever have any uh, issues with this type of thing. Sometimes I get people saying, hey, you know, I was, yeah, I was working on working and working it and it just never came out, you know, so I gave up and, uh, you know, sometimes I'll ask them, hey, well, what ink were you using? And they might be using like a memento ink on the silver card stock, you know, which is never going to really adhere or dry on that so as long as you're just kind of working with the uh the right oh kind of ink and surface you know media surface compatible you know compatible um uh whatever methodology and sometimes it's the sequencing you know comes into play sometimes it's not you know just depending on what media you're working with so you know like i said these are three you know quite different surfaces in terms of um you know, um, the way they, what inks they take and kind of what, oh, uh, kind of sequence you would use them in, you know, so, but just ask me, you know, if you ever run into anything, um, any issues like that, and we can get it worked out like, in, you know, you know, in a, whatever, like in a, like in a minute, you know, as opposed to, I don't want someone like suffering, you know, like they're working at it all afternoon or something like that. And then especially like take a photo of it and send it to me or something like that. Sometimes I don't know, um, you know, maybe the specific brand of something, but I can tell kind of what's going on from a, a media standpoint in terms of maybe something's not transferring or adhering um, uh, in the way that you might want. And sometimes we can just tweak it. I'll just say, oh, you know, you will, you know, use the stays on down there instead, or instead this time use the white pigment ink, you know, um, first before you do your impressions. It's just little things like that when it comes to this type of, uh, you know, kind of unconventional surfaces like that. But once you kind of get the, uh, kind of the gist of, you know, kind of what they do, 
with those surfaces, it's it's kind of easier to kind of experiment around with that and kind of branch off, you know, and go in different directions uh, using the different types of papers you might already have, you know, and applying these types of techniques to them. Okay, so yeah, just just ask, you know, it's it's really easy, um, you know. We'll get back to you within, you know, usually five minutes, 24 hours a day. <laughs> Not really, but I'll get back with you as soon as I can with something like that. Okay, so uh, Ginger, have you tried alcohol ink on the silver foil cardstock? I, I think I might have before, but I don't remember. So on this one, on the silver cardstock, I use the Stazon ink, okay? So if I used the alcohol pens of the Stazon, it would completely put that Stazon back into solution. So that would have been, now see, that would be, that would be like a, a really awesome um, media to use on here because the alcohol, I believe, will dry on here just fine. It gives you that kind of that weird kind of alcohol -y ink um, kind of patterning to it. You know, because it's not absorbing into the surface at all, so it's just going to be laying on the surface. But I would have been able to come into those areas with, you know, kind of like a, you know, like these grayscale, you know, types of tones, like this medium gray, like this. Then that would have been perfect for those shadow areas in there, but I just couldn't do it with the stays on, you know, ink in there. But I'd be able to blend these on that top of that silver paper just, you know, like perfectly, but we'd have to have some sort of ink that uh, adheres and dries on that silver cardstock that's not going to go back into solution. So I don't know if anything like that exists. Um, oh, okay. So that being said, maybe we can use a brilliance ink on here. Okay. Or you, maybe the stays on ink, but then you spray seal the stays on ink impression thick enough to where, you know, some mild types of applications with the alcohol ink um, that can put acrylic sealant back into solution too, but maybe it's just, you know, uh, so lightly applied, you know, in terms of the alcohol that we would use on there that we wouldn't have to worry about that. So you might be able to spray seal things and, you know, come back into it with media that you wouldn't otherwise be able to apply. So I haven't tried all those different types of things like that out. Um, but I have a feeling that we could get away with some things. It's just as long as we spray seal it or spray fix it down, I think it, uh, you know, might work. But yeah, I mean, something like that would be really cool. Um, thanks, Annie. Annie, hope you're doing well. Thanks everyone. Hope you have a great rest of evening or whatever time it is for you. Afternoon, overseas, morning, etc. <laughs>